Hi, my name is Carlene Tan. I'm an assistant attending uh, on the myeloma service at the Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center. Um, I would like to uh, thank the IMF for giving me the opportunity to present uh, this study on carfilzomib, lenalidomide, and dexamethasone versus bortezomib, lenalidomide, and dexamethasone as induction therapy in newly diagnosed high-risk multiple myeloma uh, on behalf of my colleagues. Over the past two decades, outcomes for multiple myeloma have improved substantially as the results of novel therapeutics. However, uh, prognosis remains suboptimal for patients with high-risk disease, making up approximately 20% of newly diagnosed cases. High-risk multiple myeloma has historically been associated with the median progression-free survival of approximately 24 to 30 months with a predicted overall survival of less than three years. High-risk newly diagnosed myeloma patients are underrepresented in clinical trials that subsequently analyze ad hoc as a subgroup. Therefore, there is uh, variability of recommendations for the management of high-risk newly diagnosed multiple myeloma in the absence of enrichment design randomized studies. Achieving and sustaining MRD negativity, however, appears to be a very important goal for improved survival outcomes in high-risk myeloma. Carfilzomib lenalidomide dexamethasone and bortezomib lenalidomide dexamethasone are commonly used induction regimens for the treatment of newly diagnosed myeloma in the United States. These two regimens were compared in the phase three randomized endurance trial, which did not find that KRD was superior to VRD in patients with standard risk multiple myeloma. In a parallel study, uh, SWOG S1211 evaluated the addition of elotuzumab to VRD induction um, and maintenance in high-risk newly diagnosed myeloma patients and found no improvement in PFS with ELO-VRD compared to VRD alone. Um, given the lack of randomized evidence and standard induction regimens for this patient population, we examined outcomes associated with KRD and VRD induction in the management of high-risk newly diagnosed myeloma patients treated at Memorial Sloan Kettering, including patients who received a autologous stem cell transplant as part of frontline treatment. Here we have the study designed. We performed a retrospective analysis on 154 consecutive high-risk newly diagnosed myeloma patients with last follow-up date of September 30th, 2022. We included adult patients with um, high-risk cytogenetic abnormalities defined as 1Q gain or amplification, translocation 414, translocation 1416, translocation 1420, and or deletion 17P or monosomy 17. 67 patients received VRD induction, of which 30 patients underwent early autologous stem cell transplant, defined as a transplant within 12 months of starting induction therapy without progressive disease. 87 patients received KRD of induction, of which 47 patients proceeded with early transplant. The primary endpoint of the study was progression-free survival, uh, secondary endpoints include overall response rate at the end of induction, MRD negativity rate at the end of induction, event-free survival, and overall survival. This table depicts the baseline characteristics of patients with high-risk newly diagnosed myeloma. The patients in the KRD group were younger. The median age for the VRD-treated patients was 66 and 61 for the KRD-treated patients. The majority of the patients had RISS stage 2 disease with an ECOG performance status of 0 to 1. 45% of the patients in the VRD group and 54% of the patients in the KRD group underwent early autologous stem cell transplant. Here is the breakdown of the high-risk cytogenetic abnormalities in both groups with gain or amplification of 1Q as a predominant abnormality. Over 70% of patients had one high-risk cytogenetic abnormality, and 24% in the VRD group and 28% in the KRD group had more than one high-risk feature, making them making up the high ultra-high-risk patients. For these ultra-high-risk patients, the high-risk cytogenetic abnormality included one Q gain or amplification, with another high-risk fish abnormality in 14 patients in the VRD group 
and 22 patients in the KRD group. Uh, the median number of cycles received for induction was six in both groups. Here on the left, we have the best response to induction therapy. Uh, the overall response rate at the end of induction was 93% for VRD and 98% with KRD. There were more patients achieving a complete response or better in the KRD group with 25% and 40% of patients in the VRD and KRD groups respectively achieving a CR or better. In the right bar graph, we showed the MRG negativity rate at the end of induction in patients who had achieved a VGPR or better. Of the, 40, of, the, of the 39 and 79 evaluable patients in the VRD and KRD groups respectively, MRG negativity rates at the end of induction were similar in both groups at 21% for VRD treated patients and 29% for KRD treated patients. After a median follow-up of 55.8 months for all patients, the median PFS was 41 months for the VRD group and 70.9 months for the KRD group. The five-year PFS estimate was 35% for the VRD treated patients and 58% for the KRD treated patients with a hazard ratio of 0 0.58 and a p-value of 0.02. At the date of last follow-up, 20 patients have died in the VRD group and 13 patients have died in the KRD group. After a median follow-up of 48.9 months, the median overall survival was not reached in the VRD group and 77.7 .7 months in the KRD treated patients. The five-year overall survival estimate was 63% for VRD and 85% for KRD, with a hazard ratio of 0 0.4 and a p-value of 0 0.01. We conducted a multivariate analysis for important clinical variables that may affect survival outcomes. The multivariable analysis for PFS showed the following variables highlighted in the red boxes were found to be statistically significant, including uh, receiving KRD induction, early autologous stem cell transplant, no known cardiac history prior to induction therapy, RISS stage one disease, and receiving more than six cycles of induction. The multivariable analysis for overall survival showed that the following variables highlighted in red were found to be statistically significant, including KRD induction, early autologous stem cell transplant, RISS stage one disease, compared to stage two uh, and stage three, um, as well as receiving more than six cycles of induction therapy were associated with longer overall survival. We also conducted a subgroup analysis of the 77 high-risk newly diagnosed myeloma patients who received early autologous stem cell transplant at the median follow-up since transplant of 56.5 months for the VRD treated patients and 44.1 months for the KRD treated patients, the estimated five-year PFS rate was 24% for the VRD group and 60% for the KRD group with a hazard ratio of 0 0.49 and a p-value of 0 0.04. After a median follow-up of 42.6 months for the VRD treated patients and 43.5 months for the KRD treated patients since transplant, the estimated five-year overall survival was 53% for the VRD group and 87% for the KRD group, which is not a statistically significant difference. To summarize, in this retrospective study of 154 consecutive patients treated at MSK with high-risk newly diagnosed multiple myeloma, we observed a greater depth of response among patients who received KRD compared to VRD induction Additionally, we observed a significant improvement in PFS associated with KRD after a median follow-up of 55.8 months. For the KRD and VRD patient groups who received early autologous stem cell transplant, there was a statistically significant difference in five-year estimates for PFS, but no significant difference for overall survival. A multivariate analysis, KRD induction, early autologous stem cell transplant were associated with better PFS 
and OS in patients with high-risk newly diagnosed myeloma. RIS as stage two and three compared to stage one were significant predictors for progression or death. Receiving more than six cycles of induction therapy was also associated with longer PFS and OS. Since the optimal number of induction cycles for high-risk myeloma is not well established, this needs to be further examined in clinical trials. Diagnosis and treatment of high-risk newly diagnosed myeloma patients remains a challenge. There is a significant need for enrichment design trials for high-risk newly diagnosed myeloma patients to help establish standard management approaches for this patient population. And with that, I wanted to thank you for your attention. And I would like to acknowledge my colleagues in the Myeloma and BMT services at MSK, as well as our database manager and research staff. Most importantly, I would especially like to thank our patients, their families, and their caregivers. Thank you.